So thank you so much for being here. Very excited to talk to you today about our latest understandings of the science of marijuana and CBD. Before we officially start, a couple quick things. I never thought I'd be giving a talk on this subject. This was not something I went to, thought that I would be talking about. I never thought I'd be giving a talk where I cited a study about how many puffs of marijuana someone will take until they lessen their anxiety. I never thought I'd be giving a talk where we talk about the difference between smoking, vaping, and eating marijuana. I never thought I'd be giving a talk where there'd be free samples. Oh, there's no free samples, sorry. A few people just woke up, I think. But I, I'm sorry to disappoint you, there are no free samples, so I understand if you have to go. But we will talk about this very important topic. Why do we need to talk about this? For so many reasons. Our world has changed dramatically. Have you all seen these billboards, right? You can have marijuana delivered legally to your door at the press of a button from your phone. If you would have told people this just a few years ago, their heads would explode, that they could be home and press a button and marijuana would just show up at their doorstep. But we need to talk about what's real about this in terms of science. And I mention that because I know that there are people here that have many different feelings about this topic. This is a emotionally charged, politically charged topic. We are gonna try to ignore the politics as much as we can, ignore the emotions as much as we can, and just talk about what do we know scientifically? What are the studies that we know of and what are they telling us? And just stick to that tonight. Let's start with this question. What's the difference between cannabis and marijuana? Pretty much nothing, right, that's correct. For tonight's purposes, cannabis and marijuana are essentially the same thing. Cannabis is the scientific term, that's the botanical term. Marijuana is essentially the slang term. But tonight we will use those terms interchangeably. I will say cannabis, I will say marijuana. For tonight they mean the same thing. We will address how marijuana works in your brain and body. What are the latest, most accurate studies? What do we know, what do we don't know? What's the future of marijuana as a medicine? And we'll talk a lot about CBD. CBD, one of the hottest areas in wellness today. Has anybody heard of this idea, N of one? Have you heard that term? Okay, so N of one essentially means one person's experience with a medication. And so the future of medicine, personalized medicine is, what is this medication gonna do for this one person? That's where we wanna get, we wanna help each individual. And when it comes to marijuana, we wanna be very respectful of the fact that I'm sure there's people here who have stories personal stories, close family members who've used marijuana, medical marijuana, cannabis, and it's tremendously helped them. We want to respect that. And there are people here that might have tried it and it had no impact on them. But really scientifically what we want to do is we want to take those experiences, the one person's experience, and be able to say this is going to be helpful for the next person and the next person. And how do we actually use this so we feel good about saying things for the general population as, as well as one individual. So we want to balance those two things. What is one of the largest and fastest growing groups of marijuana users? Senior, senior. senior citizens. Senior citizens are one of the fastest growing groups. There are issues with pain, inflammation, anxiety, sleep issues in all age groups. But according to the CDC, about 80% of older adults have at least one chronic health condition. And individuals are understandably searching for something that doesn't have a lot of side effects that can give them some sort of relief for these issues. We definitely need better treatments. We have an opioid epidemic when we're talking about pain. We'll talk about that a little bit. But we need reliable information. Doctors need to be informed as well as patients. This talk has a spoiler alert. And one bit of a spoiler alert is there's going to be moments in this talk where you're going to be frustrated. That's about right. This subject is frustrating scientifically. So if you have that feeling, that's about right. But there is a lot of hope, and we're gonna end with some very hopeful aspects of this science. 